Hello again, welcome to another edition of the Real Ale Guide. Again, joined by Chris. Um, now, I've been wanting to try this beer for such a long time. Chris has raved about this one, so uh, do you want to introduce it to the camera? Yep. This is from the Thornbridge Brewery. It's a Kipling. Look at that. Uh, when I first happened to these, I thought this is maybe the baby brother to the Jai Pur. Mm. Jai Pur being my favourite beer at the time. Yeah. And um, after a couple of these, I changed my mind. This isn't a baby brother. This is a cleverer, younger sibling. Yeah. Ooh. Um, it's better, I think. But we'll do some reserve judgment. So I've twisted his arm to try and get him to our Absolutely. Mouth. Well, I've been pretty excited because um, I have heard this is a very good beer. Innovation, passion, and knowledge. So let's get these beers open, is it? Oh, you've got a nice, uh, just so uh, see if it focuses, and a nice Thornbridge cap there. I think that's changed. I think if you look at my Jaipur review, I think that's a new design on the cap there. There you go. Normally get a nice little head of steam out of these. Yeah. We haven't got a Thornbridge glass, so we'll be using the Great British Beer Festival. Neutral territory. Yeah, let's give it a pour. You've got to be careful with these because, like the dry pour, the head can be a bit of a beast if you're not careful. And you end up with a nice lolly. Yeah, absolutely. I am loving, loving the colour. Look at the colour on that. That almost looks soft. It almost looks... Mm. Well, you look at the head. Yeah. Let's get the head in there. You've done a bit of a better job than me over there. Look at there, and you can see that's giving you a decent head, but it's not... It's not just froth, this is just lovely head at the top of the beer. Yeah. Nice and nice and white, nice and clear. Yeah. Lots of tiny bubbles as well. Yeah. Nice, it looks very, that, that looks so clean for a beer. Uh, I, I was at um, the British Girl the Beer Writers on Thursday and everybody was mentioning how people taste with their eyes. Now if somebody was to pour that in a glass and look at that, it's, it's a great start, isn't yeah. it? It is a great start. Lovely. Okay, should we get the nose? Yeah. Oh, I'm getting pineapple. I've done it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I've got a slight blocked nose at the moment, so I've just uh, over the sniffing <laughs> and got a nose full of foam, but um, there we go. But yeah, I'm, it's the, the, the Salvin hop. Yeah. Um, which I think. We've had before but in various different beers. Yeah, um, oh, I can't think of the, the, the Adnams green, beer, the Green Bullet, I think. Yeah, um, had that. But this is this is making a different use of it. Where we picked up gooseberry there, which is quite yeah. mild. This, yeah. this is um, it's pineapple, 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 grapefruit. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's that kind of end of. It, this is more of a, a lemon new peel, lemon peel on there. Right. Oh, it's wonderful. It's, it, it's one of them beers you could stand and sniff all day. Mm. Put press pause on the camera and then you just... <laughs> oh, we're already minutes. three minutes 30 in and we haven't taken a sip yet. It yeah. just shows that, that we're just happy looking and, and smelling this beer. So, uh, cheers Chris. Yes. Thanks for bringing the beers. You're welcome. That's all kinds of good. All kinds, that is. Oh wow, and then there's a, a bittering on the end as yeah. well. Mm. It really is a proper front of the mouth, lip puckering. Oh. Mm. And it's right at the top wow. of your gums, right at the front, right at the end. Yeah. These little bites of the lemony buzz. Yeah, wow. This is going to take, this is one of these beers, it's going to take the whole pint for both of us to pull flavours out of this beer. Mm. There is so much going on. So, um, let's go for it. Mm. There's, the, there's lemon and grapefruits, pineapple. I mean, what I like is that you get it around your mouth, you get it under your tongue, and those bubbles... Those bubbles are still in there when they get in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they push, they push the flavours all around your mouth. Yeah. Really amazing. Really good. Oh, that, that's... 
That is one of the highlights of my year for beer. That is one of my highlights. Now you've reviewed some strong beers here on the channel and you've been trying beers from all over the place. Where does this beer sit with you? This is as good a quality beer as the Beer de Borgos that I think we've done and yeah. the high end of those. Um, for me, it's a nicer beer, it's a better beer. Um, <clears throat> Purely for the taste. For, for me personally, it's yeah. It's, it's, whether it's craft, crafted as well. Well, I mean that's that's a that's a debate you could carry on a week. Yeah. 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 The word craft is a, is a highly um, topical word. Um, now I'd like to ask you as well, Chris. Being five point two percent with all these flavours, you've bought it a lot in the past. Yeah. When you can get it in, in, in the shop, it seems to clear every time every time it goes in. Um, Sometimes that's just me taking them all. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Bath Hills gem was an actual substitute. If you watch that, that was a substitute to the Kipling. Mm. Didn't quite make it because there was none left. But that just shows how much of a good seller it is. How many of these, Chris, have you sessioned? Can you carry on going with it? Or do you want to move on with a, what stage or what bottle do you think, right, I want something else now. Can you session this beer? I've, if, if you had a clear run and you knew you didn't have to get up early the next morning, you could probably tuck four or five of these away yeah. quite happily. Yeah, with a pizza sauce. Yeah, without any real kind of yeah. um, after effect. I, mean, I, I tend to couple it with... A dry pur, you know, I'm a two beers a night kind of guy. Yeah. You know, so have a dry pur, then have one of these as a finisher. Yeah. And, and and that's what I like to do. But you know, equally, you know, this this is beautiful. Um, Stunning. Yeah. You, you could just go with it all evening if you wanted to. I think. What's your feeling on it? My continue? feeling is that waitros are going to come under a lot of pressure <laughs> because they've just found somebody else who wants to run down there every every few days and pick up a couple of these Jipers, uh, uh, sorry, Kipling, should I say. I think, uh, like I said, the reason it is selling very, very quickly is because everybody uh, is picking it up. And I mean, Chris now has stopped telling people. Yeah, it, it, I made the mistake. I went down there, there's some of you got looking at all the beer range. I said, if you try anything today, try this. Yeah, and, and you know, um, it's, it's not that I take that my position as some of you likes beer particularly seriously. Passion. I, it's a passion. Yeah, I, I wanted somebody else to enjoy it. Mm. And ever since I did that, I haven't been able to get a hold of the damn stuff. <laughs> so every time it pops up, there might be four bottles and one hidden yeah. around the back that somebody's put there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm having to just grab them when I can. It's great stuff. I am very impressed with this. Yeah, you just asked me my take on it. I'm very impressed. Um, it's in a good dark bottle. It's not going to let in any light sitting on the supermarket shelf. Um, this brewery clearly knows what it's doing. Oh, yeah. The 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 Nelson Sa Nelson Savion Salvin, yes, Nelson Savion hop in this. I've tried it in two other beers. I've tried it in Adnams New Zealand Pale Ale, and I tried it up in with Magic Rock. I tried it with sorry with Mallinson's Brewery in the hops. I think it was called. It was very very nice. But this this takes it to the next level. This is. 5.2% ABV, it's yeah. jam-packed with flavour, mm. so much so that, well, I think as the beer's warmed up from the fridge now, we might be able to pull a few more flavours out of this, mm. if, if we could, um, if we could, what, what are your, what, what are you getting from this, Chris? Um, it's difficult, it's, imagine... You pulled out a number of flavors earlier, and and you you know they will be at home in a, in a tropical drink. This don't don't confuse that idea with the, the tropical drink, a mongo with yeah with this beer. Those flavors are present. Mm. The 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 grapefruit, the pineapple, the, they're all there, sort of in the background. But um, and what I particularly like about this is the bitterness. Yeah, yeah, it just. Comes in, comes in after mm -hmm. you've got this big sweep of flavour that actually yeah. fills up your whole mouth with, the, and the way the beer is brewed that makes it fill up your whole mouth, and yeah, forces it to, and then you get this whack of bitterness. It comes on the aftertaste and leaves your front of your mouth just, yeah, uh, uh, that, that's what this beer is all about for me. Yeah, it's that classic 
British, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say British, it's not quite British, classic English bitter, but to a, to a higher level of, you get the, it's the other way around, you get the sweetness first with this beer, and then you get the bitterness, and it's a very, very good complement to each other mm. with, with the drink. I mean, they've picked this up as a golden nail here on the, on the, on the writing back here. I, I, given the beer that Borgo picked up their, uh, their IPA, as, as an IPA, yeah, it's not dissimilar, you know, no. in terms of the build of the beer. I call it a pale ale. Mm. The le the level down from a, for an IPA. I call this a, a brilliant pale ale and thoroughly recommend it to anybody yeah. who likes their hoppy bitter beers. Yeah. I'm having to start to say that now because I've been given a lot of recommendations to my beers, and people. I had one person come back say that was so bitter, that was terrible. I had to throw it down the sink. If you don't like really, really bitter hoppy beers, yeah. go for a classic malty. Go for a Sammy Smith, something yeah. like that. Or, yeah. or, or the bath, bath Gem. Yeah, go for a Bath Gem. Yeah. Mm. So, but if you do, go for this. Yeah. What would you give this in a rating, Chris? I, just to show you. Yeah. Pick up your oh, yeah, yeah. Show, show the artwork off there. Yeah, so, we so we've got we have a naked lady on the front. No. Right, oh, so nice pointy up the... Uh, Nips on it. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly saucy. Um, not something you know, you'll pick up all the beers with the kind of slightly fruity ties, was the Cornish knockers. The, yeah, yeah. You did the jingle knockers as well, didn't you? Oh yes, I did that so, um that was a six month old review that one. And, and, and Kate Loves Willie and all that kind yes, of stuff. Yes, yeah. yes. They they'll come up with the fruity titles, but not many brewers will get a naked lady on the front of that. No, that yeah. It's class. It's a little bonus. It's, it's class. Yeah. Because she's made out of stone. Yeah. So they get away with it. Yeah. Brilliant. And that, and that comes back to what this beer is about. It's a classy beer. You know? Yes, yes. This isn't just your bog standard, you know, I'm off down for four pints of... John Smith. Yeah, I'm not having four pints of John Smith. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend my money a little wiser. Yeah. And get something quality. I'm going to be a little perhaps downbeat. Everybody's talking about austerity at the moment. Um, if you wanted, if you wanted to, sp I found that people are commenting saying they are spending their money wisely now. Mm -hmm. They're going for something they really, really want instead of instead of, because I find uh, I'm not going to mention the Popsy McLagers um, on the show, but I found how expensive they are now. They're, they're sometimes they're two pound a can, and you're thinking a little bit more money, well, and you get something like this. These are two quid a pop, give or take. I would much sooner have. One of these and a dry pot, or two of these, then I would four cans of Bass or four cans of John Smith. Yeah, yeah. Or four cans of whatever you know. Yeah. Uh, this is this is an evening's worth of enjoyment. You will savour this bit, and we've got a bit quicker on this than I normally would. Yeah. But that's for reviewing purposes. And <clears throat> absolutely. Mm. Um, this brewery absolutely deserves this. Um, I, I do it anyway, but I would never ever miss this out. I'm going to give the, um, there's two different sites here, it's www.thornbridgebrewery.co.uk or if you want to email them, perhaps it's info at thornbridgebrewery.co.uk Please, please, if you're intrigued by this video, if you're watching thinking, mm. wow, they're really rating this beer highly, we don't think, well, we haven't got around to rating it yet, but um, check out the website, I'm sure they've got some more great, great beer, they might have some yeah. specials on the site, check them out. I think there's five in the range, but I've only managed to source two so far. Right. So, um, I'm looking forward to get working out where I can get the others. I think my brewery tap would probably be able to sort me out. Yeah, check out mybrewerytap.com. So, rating, Chris. Rating. What you give this wonderful beer. This is my favourite beer since I started drinking beer. Wow. I like hoppiness. I like the IPAs, mm. and this is virgin to that category. It's a bit different. It's got the fruitiness. It's got massive bitterness. It's classy. Amazing yeah. stuff. Um, I feel that you could drink four or five of these without suffering too much. I would give this a nine and a half, and I think that's probably as as high as I've gone. I think you give it, yeah, a nine and a half for the real extra. Mm. So yeah, perhaps yeah, yeah, as good as as good as a brilliant beer. For me, um, it's not very often I give tens, but I've been blown away by this. So I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give a full ten out of ten. Right. Ten out of ten for this. It's it's, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. 
as Chris said, as I said, there is so much going on. You could probably, I think you would need three bottles of this over three different evenings, because mm. your palate gets shot after after one. You need, three, you need three different bottles over three different evenings to get every single flavour, mm. even an experienced beer drinker, to get all the flavours out of this beer. Yeah, absolutely. I really think, and, then, and that's jotting everything down. And I, I mean... We're going into beer geek territory now, but that's what you. I think. I think that's what you'd have to do yeah. to get all the flavour. It is so complex. But um, thanks to Chris for joining me, and thank you for bringing the beers. Um, we got the unfortunate prospect now of going back to some regular beer, but yeah. we might come back in a bit and uh, we might grab something, let Chris choose something, and uh, we might do another review soon. So thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>